We have an interesting and complicated looking radical on the board. Square root of 33 minus square root of 70 is 68 plus the square root of 240 minus the square root of 320. What are we going to do here? Um, so we're going to look at a couple of useful tools here. So let's start by looking at what happens when we square the square root of a plus b. This is just going to be a plus b plus 2 squared ab. Now we'll notice this doesn't, doesn't really look, I mean, we got four terms in our radical. This is just a number, so this is really just two terms. But what we can do is, what if we looked at square root of a plus square root of b plus c? Now when we square that, that's just going to be squaring this first term, which we already know. We just did that right here. So that piece is going to be a plus b plus 2 square root of a b. We're going to have our c squared. And then we'll have um, 2c square root of a plus 2c square root of b. Then just cleaning this up a little bit, I want to have all my numbers together, a plus b plus c squared plus, we'll, we'll just reorder these a little bit. Now we can notice a couple things that we have. This is actually four terms now, with this being a number um, and three radicals. So I'm actually not worried about the signs right now, right? Because we get that, that's a little bit of a complicating factor. I'm just gonna not worry about signs but we have three radical terms and we've got one number which matches what we have up here in the radical. Next thing we notice is all these radicals have coefficients and each coefficient is even. And we do not have that in this expression up here. But one thing I do notice is we have, each of these is actually clearly um, a multiple of four. And if you have four times anything in a radical, you can rewrite that as two times that thing, just taking the square root of four. So then, I think that's gonna be our first step, is to rewrite this guy up here, but to take that four out of each piece. So, so we'll have the square root of 33 minus two, 768 is um, four times 192. So we'll have 192 in the radical, then 240 is 4 times 60, so we'll have plus 2 times the square root of 60, and then this is going to be 4 times 80, so that's going to be minus 2 squared of 80. Okay, that's a little better, at least we have smaller numbers. The next thing I want to notice is in the radical, right, we have A, B, and then we have the product of those two things. Now, we don't have anything like that going on here. If you multiply 60 times 80, you get 4,800, which is nowhere near 192. So what I like to do at this point is get a prime factorization. So like, I'm avoiding 192 is it's harder. So we'll, we'll look at 60, which is five times two squared times three. And this is five times two to the fourth. And then 192, what is 192? Um, <laughs> what's 192? It's too late for me to try to figure out how to factor that right now. And then 192, of course, is two to the six times three. Okay, so then we need to think about how are we gonna multiply two of these numbers to get a third number. Now, so at first glance, it's impossible because it's just not working, but when you, when you look at it this way, there's a few things you can see, like, so two, you can pull perfect squares outside of the radical, so these numbers aren't fixed. But when we multiply two numbers, okay, for example, this number cannot be AB because there has to be a five. We're, we have a five here and it's not a perfect square, so we can't pull it out of the radical. So that means we need, if, we, if this was the AB, there would have to be a factor of five in it, and there's not. So this can be A or B. It can't be AB 
So, and it's arbitrary, so let's call it A. So then for what is our B? Is our B this or is our B this? So we can make a similar argument to what we just did because this term has a three and this term has a three. So if we assume for a second that this is B, well then where's the three? When we multiply A times B, we need a three in here. And it doesn't, it's not there. So then therefore this cannot be B. <laughs> and then so this, this must be our B. And then there's only one other choice. If that's our A and that's our B, then this must be AB. But then you'll notice on the AB, it's just a two. It's not any other coefficient. It's always, or the, in the format we've set that we want it to be, it has to be a two. So therefore, A times B is 60. So then we just need to manipulate this term and this term so that when we multiply them together, we get 60. So how can we go about manipulating those expressions? Well, the only thing we can really do is pull out uh, perfect squares. And we do have extra powers of two and extra powers of two. And the only, the only real requirement on here is we need to have these two coefficients are gonna be the same. 2c is 2c. So what we can do, there aren't too many options. Two to the fourth is 16. So when we pull that out, the square root of 16 is four. So we can rewrite this last piece here as an eight, four times two is eight. And then we just have our five left over here. Then we're just gonna leave this AB alone because it's all set. And then here we need to get the same, we're pulling the same thing out. So we're pulling the, the 16 out, the square root of 16 again is four. So we'll have minus eight. And then we're gonna have, it's just a break, just to show what's happening here. This two to the sixth, but we're rewriting it as two to the fourth times two squared, but we're using this piece for the radical and pulling out four. So we end up here with minus eight square root of 12. And we'll just copy down our 33. And now you'll notice that we're very close to this form. The only problem we have really right now is the sign. So then the next question is where do we introduce the negative sign? Is it gonna be here or is it gonna be here? Well, if, let's look first, if we do it here, then we'll, instead of this expression, we're gonna have something like the square root of, well, not something like exactly like the square root of a minus square root of b squared. When we multiply that out, we get a plus b minus two ab. But you'll notice in our expression, our ab is positive so the negative sign doesn't belong there, it actually belongs here. So putting these pieces together for a second, let's assume this is our A value, this is our B. Five, 12 times five is 60, so this is our AB. Then we said um, this needs to be 2C and this needs to be 2C. So then C is gonna be four or negative four. Let's just, let's just write that out right now as four, and we'll worry about the signs in a second. And then so when we come back here and we've inserted our negative sign, what we're gonna have is square root of 12 plus square root of five minus four. And then the only thing we need to do is because we have this negative sign, we're inside a radical, we need to test there's two possibilities. Okay, we have two cases, because we, um, we need to figure out is this positive? Because the principal square root is not, this is not gonna ever have, be a negative number. So then the other possibility is gonna be four minus the square root of 12 minus the square root of five. And then what we can do is we can do a very quick comparison. Let's see if I have space. And so the quick comparison is just a little, which is bigger problem, right? Four versus square root of 12 plus square root of five. And then real quick, we know that um, square root of five is greater than two because square root of four is two. And square root of 12 is greater than three because the square root of nine is three. So that means these two together must be greater than five 
but five is greater than four. So therefore, five is greater than four. This number here is greater than five, so this must be a positive number. So therefore, we're gonna reject this. This number is negative. This number is positive. And so that's gonna be our answer. Our answer will be square root of 12 plus square root of five minus four. That's it. Hope that helped. Thank you.